R.F. McEwen. first poem, these are all from a collection called White River, the characters, Aunt Rose, Grandpa, Carlos Little Boy, and the narrator are all from uh, up around Porcupine, they moved to Shannon in 1955, but the first one doesn't have anything to do with that. The first one is from Cass County, Nebraska, 1953, it's called Lion's Head. I found the Lion's Head in our backyard. It was a gnarly, flea-forgotten thing from which it seemed his majesty had fled into the forest, rising to the right of where we'd put your hogs 300 yards, not more, just where our forty ends, just there, and where spring lightnings hit in multiples of 10 each 14th year, stripped more than one of Walter Evan Hook's black walnuts bare, and riven cottonwood and oak alike. I don't suppose the lion's head must say um, anything of consequence for quite some time. The Serengeti's not a lark, Walt reckons, not from here. His mistress mine. And yet, some say there was a time big cats were tearing carcasses and drinking blood. Just where our corn is canceling and dry. Stacking Rickwood, getting on. My grandfather and Carlos little boy were right that year the summer. White River froze before its time. I think in late November, 1963. And we'd been cutting Rickwood there, southeast of Shandron, six miles off the Slim Dunes Road, dead ash and elm, and when my grandfather said elm, we just grinned. Those times we worked past dark, we came prepared with canvas for a bean jam, deep within the grove. Then after dark, we'd take some beans and fry bread, coffee too, and pie. I couldn't cut then, but I'd rip the wood and keep the saws in gas and oil and sharp. After my parents quit for good some six years before my grandfather and Carlos' little boy kept me in line, we moved to Shandron, and I went to school almost most weekends, we worked yard jobs, cut brick wood. Most summers, they both wrangled at Fort Rob while I stayed back with my Aunt Rose. I had to keep my grades in school, my teachers pleased. The winter I began this with, we'd worked Thanksgiving break, then stayed the weekend through. At night, the wind pushed hard and had its say. 
Upon their faces I could only catch a sort of cross-cut flashing in the flames. Within their voices only floating bits that seem to hang upon the smoke and drift into a limitless repose. I heard them once again today. A decade and a half gone by on graduation day, I heard my grandfather and Carlo's little boy intone this moment while the river flows. Tom is a lot more. Pan is bread and espanol, and a panderia is a panderia. When I came home from school my second day, I asked my grandfather about a breed. So what's a breed, I asked. Someone said, breed. We've moved to Shadron down from Whitehorse Creek so he can go to school, my Aunt Rose said. He goes up here, my grandfather replied and turned to Carlos' little boy for help. Carlo shook his head. Let's get the boy to Shadron then and see him through, he said. So there it was. And now we come to this. It's Mexican for bread, my grandpa said. Just like they say, let's kill the snake instead of kill or okay so eat, you say so. That's another one. A Mexican will talk like that and give him half a chance. Just ask old Carlos. He talks Mexican. I don't, said Carlos, little boy, but I know breed. Fried breed is good with any kind of berries. My grandfather seemed puzzled. But my aunt went to the kitchen and began to cook. Much later, after ice cream, she looked down the table and her jaw relaxed. I hope, she said, you three have had your fill of breeds. That's more than one you know in Mexican. In Spanish, you will hear them say, bad deal going on in my ears. I don't want no more plaque. Now, a couple years ago when somebody said that, it meant something different, but <laughs> forget about that. It, it, it goes in there like a hand grenade. This is called the lessening. The lessening. I undertook one time, I must have been near eight, to set a bull snake loose inside our I thought because Aunt Rose was in her years and bred along the river, she would know a bull against a rattler anyway and not get sore. But Carlos, little boy, and Grandpa came back early from Slim Buttes before I had a chance to get things in. Those days we spelled each other at the tub, and when we went and who went next would have to wait his turn a good half hour before another pail was boiling on the kitchen stove. Aunt Rose bathed three, four times a week and took her time. Grandpa and Carlos, little boy, and I just once, but more when they bucked spuds and hemming for it. They'd start their bath outside and work the pump, then take their turn inside. Two towels would hold us through the week. Aunt Rose used three. I'll let that be. Not many years past then, we bought a water heater and began to use it regular. Whenever we were burdened by a heavy snow and stayed too long out shoveling, we got in line. And when they bit out cutting ash wood, working horses, stacking hay, they yearned to soak. We all agreed hot water with some salts would loosen joints, unravel mysteries. We also knew there was a place inside that salt and water couldn't find. That time I set the bull snake loose, I didn't know Aunt Rose had lost her brother when a moccasin bit through his shirt when they were visiting along Big Muddy Deep in Illinois. They'd walked into the Red Oak Woods too far for her to 
drag him out. And so she stood a witness while his shoulder swelled, his throat, his face, and finally she watched his skin split ragged while his blood spread bubbly and black upon her chest. She closed his eyes. <laughs> 